Are we live? Are we good? What's going on, everybody? So I got Instagram over here. Everyone on Instagram, what's going on, my people? You already know, Jay Mancini, we're going to be talking about all about the dump truck business. If you're joining us on Instagram, we're going to talk everything that has to do with dump trucks. Any questions you have, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. We're uh, live on uh, Facebook, Instagram, obviously Instagram, YouTube. So we're good. We're ready to go. All right. So just kind of want to get as we get started, I kind of I just want to tell everybody, you know, I want to welcome everybody first and foremost. Welcome everybody to the live. I know we got people coming in right now, got people joining. Good to be here, sir. Greatly appreciate you for doing this. David Campbell, David Campbell, welcome. We appreciate you for joining live. We'll be answering your questions shortly. And as I was saying, guys, so I want to welcome everybody. The reason why we're doing this live, well, as you already know that I've been uh, doing uh, the creating, we've been creating content, talking to people about the dump truck business uh, for the last uh, three or three and a half months now. We really just started doing it just to answer people's questions. You know, as I went through different, different phases of uh, my business, I'd run into people all the time asking me, hey, Jay, how did you get started? Uh, what is it like to have a dump truck uh, business? And so, you know, I was just getting questions more and more often. And so uh, I've been hearing it from, you know, a lot of the, uh, my family members, my better half Yvette, and tell me, hey, when are you, why don't you just create a channel, you know, and, and start telling people how they can start a dump truck business. And so uh, I got my sobrino over here. He's the man behind the, everything that you see here, you know, um, said, you know what, why don't you do it? Why don't we create a channel and uh, anyone that's out there interested in learning more about the dump truck business, then they can watch the videos. And of course, some, somewhere down the road, we could connect as well. And so uh, we started with the channel and we're in about what, three and a half months now, I believe about three and a half months we've been doing with the channel. And uh, I think we're over, is it over 1500 subscribers? 1600 subscribers. Uh, I believe we're the fastest growing uh, channel in the, in, the, in the dump truck business, talking about dump trucks. So I appreciate you guys for, uh, for subscribing, you know. Um, again, we did this just, um, just trying to give back. Uh, and hopefully, and really the plan is, or, or I say the plan, but the idea was to empower other people and, and be able to give back and, and help someone out there, especially those that are not in the greater Houston area. You know, some of the folks that I might not ever get to meet that are in different cities and different states. And, um, you know, and here we are. So I, I believe we're going to continue to grow. Um, you know, I'll be getting a lot of good, positive feedback. And we appreciate you guys for also dropping the comments. By the way, I try to get to all the comments, but guys, I'm being very transparent here. I do run a business. I am actually in the business. Um, you know, social media, to be very sincere with you, is new to me. Okay? So I'm just, you know, opening up here with you guys. I'm not the guy that was behind, you know, uh, Instagram or, or, or Facebook or, or let alone YouTube, you know, because I was busy running my business and I still am very busy actively running the business. Uh, you know, we have about 30 to 40 dump trucks on the road on any given day, on average, about 150 trucks uh, throughout the week. So with that being said, I am very active and busy with, with the current business, but I do try to find the time, you know, the, uh, especially like on the weekends. Uh, to create content, and hopefully I can help you guys and empower you guys. And then, you know, obviously when we get a some time to hopefully do more lives here in the future and, you know, and answer your questions live. So, you know, guys, um, again, I hope you have questions for me, and I hope I can answer them for you to the best of my ability. I'll try to do that. So, uh, you know, have your questions ready. Uh, with that being said, uh, if you don't know, uh, much about me or you don't know really who I am and you haven't uh, seen, you know, some of the uh, first videos I did, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. So I started the business back in, uh, in the dump truck business back in 2011. And for the first couple of years, guys, uh, I was really just, you know, learning. I was a student of the game, which is one thing I talk about uh, on the videos. You'll see on the, you know, I'll, I'll probably 
say it in every video, okay? Uh, you know, just tell you to go out there, do your research, do your homework, do your due diligence. So that's what I did, guys. The first two years from 2011 to about 2013, I say first year and a half, you know, really. I was just, you know, studying the game, just studying, being a student, trying to learn the business. You know, I was going out there, networking, connecting with people that were already in the business. I was learning about dump trucks. I was learning how to find work. But really, you know, again, just building connections, you know, building a network so that I can, you know, eventually go out there and, and, and grow my business. So, you know, I tell everyone, you know, be a student of the game, you know, learn the business. You know, it's very important because the more you learn the business, you know, when you start, you can pretty much take off running. And, you know, for me, again, being very transparent with you guys, you know, I had to learn the hard way. So I made a lot of mistakes. And, uh, and, you know, there were some costly mistakes involved. So, again, I hope that with this channel, I'm able to uh, help you guys not make as many mistakes as I made. And, uh, and again, and, you know, uh, on this live, answer your questions. And, and hopefully, you know, all of this will be valuable to you, especially if you're, if you're already in the uh, dump truck business. And let's just say you've only been in the business for a few months. Uh, I know what it's like. Believe me, I've been there. I still go through challenges every day um, and I still learn something, you know, every, every, every other day or every, or at least once I'll learn something new. So you never stop learning guys. And, and you know, if, as long as you don't stop learning, you'll continue to grow. That's the way I look at it. Right. So uh, with that being said, I want to welcome uh, some of, uh, can you help me out there, Kai? I think we got a few more people coming in. Tim group. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Want to buy a super seven axle truck and come to your place of work? Is there a place? I have no experience in minimal English, but I can handle it. Thank you. Well, that's great. It sounds like you're definitely motivated, uh, Tim. You got a, you're wanting to buy a seven axle dump truck. Well, I'm going to tell you, my brother, that is very ambitious, which is a good thing. Uh, seven axle dump trucks are very expensive, depending on the make and model and the year of the truck, regardless, they're expensive. So, uh, but definitely, um, I'm actually in the, in the Houston area. So uh, maybe we can, you can DM me and we can talk more about that as far as, uh, you know, coming down if you want to visit me and shoot me a DM on Instagram. And then, you know, we can, we can move forward from there. Maybe down the road, we can, we can connect and hopefully I can help you out. Um, I think we've got, um, let's see here. I think we got somebody who is that is Luis, Luis B. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Luis. Thank you, brother, for joining us. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. Get them ready, and I'll be answering your questions shortly. But again, guys, telling you a little bit more about myself. So <clears throat> after 20, about 2013, after, you know, building and establishing those connections, uh, I started to actually, you know, generate business. <clears throat> and so I'm just letting you guys know, guys, don't, don't, and I'm being, again, very transparent, very open here with you. You know, sometimes we expect to just take off running. Um, one of the reasons why I started doing good when I really started to generate business, again, I was being student of the game, right? So I highly recommend be a student of the game and, and you know, and go out there and connect with people that are already in the dump truck business. That is very important. So you know, the more connections you make, the more relationships you build, guess what, guys? It's going to be easier for you to, you know, go from what I call the, the, the crawling stage to walking to running, right? You're going to learn to walk a little bit faster and you're going to be able to run, you know, a little bit faster, right? So, you know, those are some of the things that I did and I applied to my business. And in 2013, my business started to, you know, what I call take off and, um, and, you know, I was continuing to build connections, but the one thing that I've always lived by is, you know, continuing to have relationships and build those relationships. Till this day, guys, I'm still building relationships. And the only difference is, guys, that I'm building relationships, to be honest with you, on a deeper level. <clears throat> so as you go through different phases and stages, guys, you just got to, de you know, develop more relationships and build more relationships and reach more people. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Are we ready to go in the Q&A? I think we're going to go ahead, guys, and get started into uh, the Q&A. 
Uh, what's the first one, uh, Kai? <clears throat> Right, yep. Luis, I had a question. What is the minimum amount of capital to begin as a broker? So uh, I think there's another question, but let me answer that one first. What is the minimum amount of capital to begin as a broker? Luis, great question, brother. Great question. So to answer that question the right way, <clears throat> It really depends. So as a broker, you can actually start off with just hiring a few trucks, okay? And that's actually what I did. And to be very transparent with you, uh, you know, I don't have no, uh, 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 you know, I don't come from a rich family. Uh, I come from a very modest family. My parents were actually immigrants. So look, um, I had to work for everything that I, that I have, you know? And um, with that being said, you can start with a minimal amount, you know? Um, when I say minimum amount, it could be $5,000, it could be $10,000, it could be $15,000. Basically what it is, is Luis, depending on the amount of trucks that you hire, you just got to make sure you have enough capital to pay for the payroll. In other words, to pay those guys you're going to hire to go out there and, and do the work. So if you're only talking about, you know, hiring three or four guys at the beginning, you probably don't need that much capital. You know, you may only need five to $10,000 to start off. Uh, one, of the high, one of the suggestions, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, um, Go a little bit further with that, and I highly recommend. It may be a little hard at the beginning, okay? But it will get easier, I promise you. Um, when you go out there, and, um, and if you start this journey, and you hire guys, first and foremost, make sure the contractor that's going to hire you, okay? Make sure that you got good payment terms with them, meaning make sure you establish the payment terms up front. So it's like, hey, ABC Construction Company hires Luis B, right, as a contractor for trucks you know, set something up where they can pay you like on a biweekly basis. Most, most contractors now, unfortunately, pay in a 30-day. Some even take longer than that. We won't get into all those details right now, right? But try to see if they can pay you biweekly. So meaning if you only got three or four trucks and you're just starting your business like I did, again, you're not needing a whole bunch of capital to start. So I hope that answers your, uh, your question. Uh, I think you also said in addition... In addition, what is it going to be? Is there another question? In addition, what is it going to be a minimum, minimum hourly rate charge? You can request from general contractors. Okay, so what, what you're asking is, I believe you're asking when you go out there in your dump truck, is there a minimum rate or minimum hourly, a minimum set amount of hours you should request, meaning <clears throat> if I go on, like Luis sends trucks out on the job uh, to ABC Construction, you know, ABC Construction, I'll be more than delighted to have trucks uh, on the job site tomorrow. However, Mr. Uh, Joe from ABC Construction, we do have a minimum eight hour charge. I believe uh, that is the question you're asking. That is one thing that we do and we apply in our business. By the way, make sure you let them know up front. OK, it's extremely important. Be transparent, be upfront. OK, and believe me, in the long run, this will help you out. OK, overall, in general. So just be upfront with them, you know, and tell them, hey, look, ABC Construction, look, I, I have a minimum of eight hours. And if they say, OK, well, man, eight hours, I only need you for four. Well, Mr. ABC Construction, the reason why I have an eight hour minimum is the following, OK? I'm going to be dedicated to having these three or four or five trucks on your job site, meaning whatever it is you need, we're there for you, okay, to meet your expectations. So unfortunately, I cannot go out there for four hours, okay, and then cut my trucks off and have them go home or set them up to go on another job. Because just like you, any other contractor wants us to meet their expectations, right? So what you want to tell them is there's an eight-hour minimum. You know, I have to have these guys go out there and just like your guys, your owner, I mean, sorry, your operators that are out there operating the, the machines, the equipment, the excavators, the bulldozers, right? You're not going to send them out there for just four hours. So this is just for you to know, right? But again, you just want to tell them, Mr. ABC Construction, eight hour minimum is what we have. And guess what, uh, Mr. ABC Construction, you may want to, uh, us for four hours, but there's chances that when we go out there, you might end up needing us for more than four hours, right? 
So we have an eight hour minimum and that's how I would go about that. That's what we do. Uh, most of our contractors know that we have an eight hour minimum. I hope that answered your question. Next question. What is the, uh, David Campbell, what's going on brother? David, what is the best starter dump truck to start off with? I am considering a 2012 Freightliner Cascadia. Uh, uh, gross vehicle weight is 52,000 pounds. My friend in the business don't think it is a good truck to start off with. So I'm gonna answer that. But first, your friend in the business, how long has he been in the business? And why is he telling you this? Now, I don't know your friend, but shout outs to your friend. I hope he's also uh, following us, you know, on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. But I got to be honest with you, David, uh, I don't discourage anybody, but I'm kind of with him on this one. I am not a personal fan of a Freightliner Cascadia. Now, I'll be very transparent. Once again, I have seen Freightliners, Cascadias out on the road here in Houston, converted into dump trucks. <laughs> As you know, those are actually over the road trucks. So they have to be converted into a dump truck uh, after after they've been purchased, you know. So, again, um, I am personally not a fan of a Freightliner Cascadia. Now, could it be a, a starter dump truck? Yes, it can. Can it get the job done? Yes, it can. Um, it really varies and it depends on what condition, what shape the truck's in and what they're asking for. Right. So if they're asking, you know, um, and I don't know those, the condition is the truck's in, right? But if they're, if they're asking, you know, for something very reasonable, <clears throat> meaning whatever they're asking for the truck is definitely worth what the truck, you know, it's definitely worth the value of the truck, then, you know, it may be okay to start with that truck. But again, me personally, um, and I don't want to go too deep with this, but I will tell you, uh, I personally like uh, Max, Fre uh, Max, uh, Kenworth, and Peterbilt's. <clears throat> and guys, excuse me if you hear a little bit of coughing. It's uh, here in Houston, man. Bad allergy. So excuse. I'm going to just have you guys excuse me up front. I'm going to drink a little bit of tea here to clear my throat. <clears throat> All right. Um, Javier Moore. Mr. Javier. By the way, we have something in common, but uh, we'll, uh, you, if you DM me, I'll tell you what we have in common. Javier Moore, afternoon, Jay. Thanks for this live. How do we find mechanics in our area that have dump truck experience or heavy equipment experience to let us know if a dump truck is worth purchasing? All right. <clears throat> great question, Javier. I love it. That is, that is a great question. Um, one of the challenges that I had I'm starting, and everybody's probably going to have this challenge. I hope not, but Javier, one of the challenges I had, man, and this is a great question. When I started, um, I couldn't find good mechanics. I really, truly couldn't. It took me a few years to actually find some good mechanics. So I kind of had to play the filter game. So what I would do is the follow. This goes back to building a network, building a network, building connections. You know, try to build a connection with somebody that's already in the dump truck business, whether it's an owner operator or somebody who's just been in the business in general and ask them, hey, man, who's your mechanic? Uh, uh, what's his name? Bobby. OK, how long have you been knowing Bobby? You've been knowing him for how long? Two years, three years, five years. Uh, how does he you know what kind of work does he do? Does he do good work? OK, you're taking your truck there. What has he done for you? OK, great. If you get good feedback, that's the way I would go about that. You know, just again, it goes back to building connections. Talk to guys that are already in the dump truck business and ask them, hey, who's your mechanic? What has he done for you? And I would just gather a list. If I went in my phone right now, uh, Javier, I probably have, and I could, I could show you guys here on Instagram. If I type in diesel mechanics on that phone, I don't want to exaggerate, I probably have over 30 phone numbers. And what I had to do was just kind of filter them out, right? So now I have a two set mechanics and those are my guys that I stick to. Uh, but I hope that that answers your question. <clears throat> well, Luis, Luis again, Luis, okay. Luis is asking, what is the hourly pay 
in the Texas market to the last question you answered. Thank you. So the last question that I answered. Kai, can you take us to the last questions for those who just joined in? Minimum hourly rate charge you can request from general contractors. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Okay, I, I was actually telling you the minimum amount of hours I would request. Uh, so as far as the hourly rate, well, Luis, it's an open, it's an open-ended question. It depends on what kind of dump trucks you're going to send out there. Are they tandems? Are they tries? Are they quads? Are they quin axle? Right? Um, are they six axle? Meaning six axles in the rear. You know, uh, depends on what kind of dump truck, right? So depending on the size of the dump truck, that's going to depend on the hourly rate you're going to charge, right? Because the bigger the dump truck, the more material it can haul. So the hourly, hourly rate is going to naturally increase, meaning you're going to charge them more. So I kind of have to go that route to answer your question to my best of ability. I have to know what kind of dump trucks you're planning on sending out there. Uh, or it could be an end dump trailer, right? So um, on, uh, let's see here on Instagram. Hey, look, my good buddy, Mario. Mario, what's going on, brother? I see you joined Mario Entrepreneurs Club. That's my family. If you don't know, I'm one of the co-founders of Entrepreneurs Club. We help empower, educate, and connect people here in the greater Houston area. Uh, let's see here. RYB101814. Thank you for joining. Uh, Shoreway Dump Trucks. Shoreway Dump Trucks. What's going on, brother? Thank you for joining. Anybody that has a question on Instagram, feel free to send me a question. And you already know, I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. Uh, Kai, we got some more questions coming in on the YouTube. Okay, we got a question from Javier. All right, Javier, my brother, let me see. <clears throat> if I see a dump truck for sale in another city or state that I want to purchase, how do I find a mechanic that would go and look at it for me to see if it is worth my time to go there and buy it? Thanks. Okay. Javier, I, I, I know exactly what you're asking. <clears throat> so I've actually bought trucks in other states. Uh, I've actually gone to, I've actually gone all the way out to California to buy trucks in the past. And the reason why I like going out to California, Javier, is I'm not sure how much you know about the state of California, but they keep them tight over there, meaning they, they, gotta, they make sure DOT out there is, man, they're tight with those guys out there running those trucks. They make sure their trucks are top notch. So, um, and they have, a, they're just, it's just really honestly their federal regulations. So most of the guys in California, one of the things that I learned is when their trucks get it to about the 10 to 12 year point, they usually sell them, even if it's in good shape. Because of the way the, the, the laws and regulations, you know, state laws and regulations and the way DOT is out there. So um, I've gone out to California, bought some used trucks in really great conditions and gotten some actual good deals. Now, to answer your question about mechanics, me being in the business, um, you know, I actually already know what to look for. And I did a video about that, too, by the way. I, we just dropped the video uh, last week, right, Kai? That was last week. Hopefully that video will help you. Um, watch that video and I think that video will help you. Uh, but yes, what, what I've done is I've gone, you know, obviously myself. And of course, I know what to look for um, because of the experience. Now, if you don't have a whole bunch of experience, I get it. You're looking for a mechanic out there. What I've done, Javier, I know it may be uh, maybe not very cost efficient for you if you're new and just started. I've actually taken one of my guys that used to be a mechanic and he's now a driver. Um, you know, I've I've paid him, you know, uh, the daily rate that he would normally, you know, earn in here in Houston. He flies out with me and we go and we check out the truck. Uh, that's the route I've gone. Now, to be sincere with you, I have not hired other mechanics. Uh, when I'm out there, I don't hire other mechanics. I really don't know anybody as far as mechanics in the state of, Te uh, the state of California when I went out there. So, again, I took my guy. Uh, but uh, as far as the suggestion... I would probably uh, maybe, you know, look for guys that are uh, in the state of California. I'm not sure what city, right? But wherever city it is, in my, my example, right, if I was going out to California again and I wasn't going with my guy and I didn't know much about him, uh, what I could do is I could look up and maybe make some connections, you know, look up somebody that's in the dump truck business out there and, you know, just try to establish some kind of connection and just ask them, hey, man, do you know any mechanics out there? Do you use a mechanic? 
And I'm sure they'll send you a mechanic's phone number, right? And just call the mechanic and just be very straight up with them. Be like, hey, listen, man, I'm actually in, um, you know, Houston, Texas. Uh, you know what? I'm not from L.A., but look, um, so-and-so talked really good about you. Would you be willing to come out and check this truck for an hour, you know, or 45 minutes? You know, I'm willing to pay you, uh, you know, a, a good rate. Um, I know you may charge, you know, X amount of dollars, but I'm willing to pay you a little extra if you're willing to come out and help me and check out this truck. That would be a, a, a way that I, I would also go about it. Hope that answers your question. <clears throat> so Instagram, we'll go back to Instagram. Um, short weight dump trucks. Let's see here. Can you turn me on to some jobs out here? I think we connected before on the DM. Um, so like I mentioned before, uh, yeah, I'd be definitely like to, uh, I'd definitely be able to help you out, man. I'm always willing to help people out. Um, you know, again, uh, DM me. I think we DM'd in the past and we, and we, uh, went back and forth, uh, um, and, and had a few messages, but yeah, just DM me, brother. Let me know when you're coming down. And I would suggest you come down before. I think you were in another, I know you're in Michigan. I think I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, send me a DM and let me know. And I highly suggest you come before you even decide to move to Houston. Come down here first and check it out. Oh, uh, we have another question. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. What is the hourly rates in Texas for quads? <clears throat> so it varies, my brother. It really honestly varies, but I'm going to give you a range. It can vary anywhere from $72 to $80 an hour. And, what I, and why, why does it range? Because it depends on the material that you're hauling, and it depends on the travel time and the distance you're, you're going to be hauling that material. Hopefully that answers your questions. I know you're in the dump truck business, so I'm think, I think, I think you, you, uh, that would clarify things. You know what I mean by that. So um, let's see. We got anybody else on Instagram? Adam's Trucking. All right. When you approach a potential client, how do you introduce yourself and your services in the best way to land some jobs or build a business relationship with them? <clears throat> so how do you introduce yourself? Adam Strucking, Mr. ABC Construction, how you doing? My name is Jay Mancini. I've been in business since 2011. Um, let me tell you, and I've been in business for 2011. Uh, I work with X amount of contractors. And what I would do is I would tell them I work with XYZ Construction Company. I work with uh, AFG, you know, construction. I've done work in, you know, let's say the Galveston area. I've done work in, in, in Huntsville. I've done work in Beaumont. I've done work in Katy. So what I do is what I'm getting at is I would give them a resume pretty much. What I'm doing is I'm telling them why they should hire me, right? So it's kind of like an interview, right? What I'm going to do, and I make it short. I won't go very long, okay? Sometimes if you talk too much, that kind of, you know, might turn them off. Just be short and straight to the point. Uh, tell them, hey, this is some of the work I've done. These are some of the contractors that, that, um, that we service. And I'm even willing to uh, give you their contacts if you want to reach out to them. And it's kind of like giving them a resume. And that's the way I would go about that. Okay, Luis, my brother. I think Luis needs just to come down to Houston. Where are you, Luis, by the way? Luis needs to come down to Houston. Type, type, let me know, brother, where you're at, man. Don't, uh, by the way, guys, we're going to have a Texas truck show uh, June 24th and June 25th. We'll be at the Texas truck show. So, Luis, I think you're in Texas because you asked about Texas. Come down and visit me, brother. Um, he said, sorry for all the questions. No worries, my brother. We're here. We'll try to get to your, all your questions. Uh, is there a website to find pits or material? Uh, truthfully, there's not one specific website, uh, Luis. Uh, not, that I'm, not that I know of. Uh, this is kind of doing legwork, my brother. You got to do a little bit of legwork, you know? Um, going back to what I was saying in the beginning, um, you know, building connections and networking, and that's how you also get to know where all the pits are and all the plants, right? Uh, the plants that supply asphalt, gravel, the sand pits, the dirt pits. <clears throat> all right. 
We have a few more people here coming up. <coughs> David, David Campbell, what's going on, my brother, once again? Hey, Jay, what is the baseline horsepower for a dump truck? Haul and gravel. Um, uh, it's kind of a open question. So <coughs> as far as hauling gravel, truthfully, it doesn't matter if it's hauling gravel, asphalt, sand, dirt, tons or tons. Uh, it just depends on the type of dump truck you're interested in buying and purchasing. So um, meaning uh, if, you're, if you're looking to just buy like a tandem dump truck, um, Truthfully, as far as horsepower, something as, as small as a 350, 375, you're probably fine with it. If you're looking to <clears throat> have like a triaxle or a quad, I would go with anything 400 horsepower and above. And if you're definitely looking to buy a, a five axle, six axle, you know, a super 16, super 18, I'm not sure where you're located, you know, <clears throat> those trucks that haul 20 tons and above, I definitely suggest something with 400 power and above. All right. I hope that answers your question. All right. We got more questions. All right. Let's see here. No more questions. We got any more coming up. We'll wait for, I think we got somebody with a question there. Let's go back to the Instagram here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, sure, wait, dump trucks. He's just telling me he's in Michigan. Man, I'm glad my memory's still good, man. I talked to, I couldn't tell you how many people I talked to, brother, on a day-to-day -day basis, just in the business alone, uh, not to mention outside of the business. So I'm glad I was able to remember that, man. So like I said, brother, um, DM me. I told you, I think I've think I mentioned this to you before. I would highly recommend come and, come and visit before, man. I, you know, I don't know what Michigan's like. I've been to Chicago, but you know, I don't know what the dump truck business is like in Michigan. You know, I'm just being very transparent with you. I don't know what the hourly rates are. I've heard people say, man, the hourly rates in Texas are kind of low compared to New York and California. And I'm like, yeah, but so is the cost of living. Uh, so there's a lot of variables to go to that. So are the expenses. I guarantee you we don't have nearly as much expenses and overhead as we do in some of those other states. Not to mention cost of living. I'm not going to get into politics. So... Um, if you want to come down, brother, yeah, you can come down and visit. Just DM me, man, so we can coordinate. I am a very busy person. I'll be very honest with you. I try to, you know, uh, run my business to the best of my ability. So maybe we can uh, hopefully figure something out. If you want to come and visit first, you know, um, we can go that route. So, uh, guys, as I was saying, for those guys that are in Texas, uh, once again, we'll be at the Texas Truck Show June 24th and June 25th. It's at the NRG Center. Anybody that wants to come and meet me, um, I'll be more than happy to shake your hand, answer your questions live. Uh, we'll, be there. we'll be there. We'll have a, a booth there. We'll be one of the exhibitors. So come and check us out. Again, June 24th and 25th. That's next month at the NRG Center at the Texas Trucking Show. Um, Follow us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, or guys on YouTube. Um, okay, we got more questions. <clears throat> okay, we got a question from Luis. All right, my brother Luis. How can you, how can you make yourself stand out from the competitors without hurting competitive pricing. Oh man, Luis is asking great questions. I'm gonna say it again, because it's a phenomenal question. How can you make yourself stand out from the competitors without hurting competitive pricing? Luis, great question, brother. So I was actually hoping somebody would ask this question, Kai. Okay? This is a great question, Luis, I love it, man. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. So this is how I've been able to make a living. And I'm going to keep it very simple. By meeting and exceeding a customer's expectations. Again, meeting and exceeding customer expectations and developing relationships. So that's how you can stand out from competitors 
without, you know, uh, beating yourself down to the ground to try to compete with some of the guys that have lower rates. It's going to take some time, Luis. Be patient, my brother. Be patient, but be consistent. Every day you go out there, brother, you got to just give it the best you got. Be genuine with people. Be transparent with people, okay? And just tell them, I'm servicing you to the best of our ability. So what they're paying for is the service you're giving them, not the price, not the $2 or $3 or the $5 less an hour or, a, or, or the load, you know, if somebody's charging, you know, 80 and you're charging 85, okay? Let me tell you something. Contractors, okay, when they get to see that you service them like no one else, I promise you, in the long run, they're not going to care if they pay an extra $2, an extra $3, or even an extra $5. Why? Because they're trying to get work done. And work being done on a timely matter, not to mention a safely matter, means everything to them, even if they don't tell you that. So make sure, okay, that you stand out by being, again, transparent, being up front, being genuine, and tell them, hey, I'm going to service you to the best of my ability. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, Luis, is well, Luis, thanks for the advice, Jay. I definitely needed to hear that. That's what I'm here for, my brother. I'm here to answer you, your question, and all of you guys that are out there. Let's see if we got any uh, questions on the Instagram. We got cool. Appreciate it, Jay. Thanks for the info. Got several people joining. Guys, don't be afraid to ask questions. That's what I'm here for. Ask questions because I am here to help you guys out. So, all right, let's see here. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Okay. Okay, we got another question coming in. Question, Mr. David Campbell. All right, my brother. Hey, Jay. <clears throat> Financing a dump truck seems to be a challenge. True. The banks want you to have at least two years of experience. True. Is there a way to offset? Is there a way to offset that without paying twenty percent or more down on the dump truck? <clears throat> So, David, what I would do is a way to offset that without paying 20% or more down on the, on the truck. So I'm not sure what your financial situation is, um, you know, and, that, and that's your personal business. Um, but one thing I would do, and uh, I'm not sure where you're located, uh, David, but here in the Houston area, okay, there's actually dealerships out there that are actually willing to finance the truck for you without giving 20% down. So I'm not sure where you're going. And I think you're probably going to the big dealerships. You're probably going to the, and I don't want to name any of the big names out there and, and give them free uh, propaganda, but you're probably going to the dealerships that are brand new trucks. I'm assuming based on the question. Uh, you're in Houston? Hey, I can't tell you how many guys I've had that work for us. But to be transparent with you, just don't have the capital to go out and put 20% on a brand new truck. I mean, brand new trucks nowadays, Lord have mercy, man. They're like over 200,000. Even the tandem trucks are it's crazy now. So, um, you know, if you've got a $200,000 truck and they're asking you to put 20% down, that's like 40 grand, right? Yeah, I know it's a lot of money. Um, do some research, brother. See if there's any of the smaller, you know, I, I call it mom and pop dealerships that are willing to, um, you know, sell you a nice used truck. You may only have to put like 5% or 10% down. They're going to do a credit check. But if your credit is good, hey, you, you got to give something in return, right? So they do a credit check. They may tell you, hey, give me 5%, give me 10%. Remember, you can negotiate that too, David. So, you know, negotiate that and try to get you a used truck, man. If, if your main priority for you is to start in the business, you can start with a used truck. Just make sure it's in, you know, in, in, in a good, reliable condition where you don't have a whole bunch of uh, maintenance and repairs down the road, right? So um, that's what a lot of the guys have done here in Houston. You know, um, I've, we hire guys um, in the past that, and I, again, I can't tell you how many because there's been a lot of them that, you know, that's the way they've gone. They've gone to some of these smaller dealerships, mom and pop dealerships here in greater Houston area. 
And I've heard some of these guys tell me they put like $10,000 down and, and walked out of there with a dump truck. I hope there's uh, dealerships out there like that. Some of those smaller, de uh, smaller dealerships in your area. I'm not sure because I don't know where you're at. But look for them. There may be. There may be some of those smaller dealerships out there. Um, I hope that helps. Let's see if we got some questions on the Instagram. I think we got some questions coming in. Moon Man. Okay, Moon Man. I was thinking of moving to Texas. It's work hard to find in the dump truck industry. Uh, Moon Man, uh, depending on uh, what, what part of Texas. So, again, I'm being very honest with you guys. Area as far as the area work is not hard to find. Uh, you know, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on down here. Of course, it is very competitive, just like anywhere else, guys. It's going to be, there's going to be competition everywhere you go. And that applies to any business also, okay? So, uh, but yes, you can't find work in the area. I know that Austin, San Antonio is also booming. So I think that you can probably find uh, work out there as well. Uh, Dallas, I uh, don't have a whole bunch of uh, experience as far as, far as the greater uh, Dallas uh, Fort Worth area, but I've have I've heard that they also got a lot of work going on out there. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, we got a question coming in from Mr. Keith Hill. Keith, how you doing, sir? How do you calculate your bids? Oh man, great question. So how do I calculate the bid, Keith? Uh, Keith, we're going to do it. This is the way I do it. And I'm going to walk you through what I normally would do. Uh, it's going to, you know, so bear with me there. You may actually want to take some notes, by the way. So what I actually do, Keith, is I actually take the time to go out to the job site. And I know some of my counterparts don't do that. I shouldn't be saying that, but I want to help you out. What I actually do is I still get up and go out to the job. What that means is I drive in my truck, go to the job site, look at the job site, and I get a visual. Okay, how big is the job site? Where are we going to load? How long does it take for me to get, get out of this job site? What I do is I start timing it. Okay, because time is money. And of course, you got to again calculate not only your time, but also your mileage, right? So what I do is I go out to the job site, and I look at the job site, I start with a, I, I, I sit there and I, what I'll do is I'll start my timer, my stopwatch, and I go in there and I pretty much just do a, what I call role playing, right? And I kind of just picture our trucks going on to the job. I calculate how long it takes, okay, to get loaded. And depending on the material that you have, I mean, it could take, or, or the material that they're going to load you with, it may take five minutes to get in there and get loaded. It may take 10, may take 20. Very important, okay, Keith? Very important. That's step that one. Once you figure that out, come out the job site, drive to the dump site, drive to point B, right? Because that was point A. Drive to point B. This whole time, you got your timer going on, calculating how long it's taking you to get there. Go slow. Pretend you're driving your dump truck. When you get there, get to the dump site. Pretend you're going in there and you're dumping. Calculate the dumping time. And then you calculate the time coming back to the job site. You add that all up. That tells you how long it takes to do a round trip. And then you can figure out how many loads you're going to do it throughout the day. And then that's how you can come up with how much to charge the client and how to give a bid. Man, I hope that I leave it to you. Because believe me, most guys wouldn't tell you that. But I just gave you a formula, my brother. I hope that helps. Where is a good dealer in the Houston area? So, Luis, I don't have those like right here off the back. Um, so I usually buy my trucks. If I'm buying a used truck, I usually buy from somebody who currently owns a dump truck and is just willing to, to you know, either uh, just basically selling their dump truck. I, I usually buy from somebody that's a, a owner operator or somebody that may have like four or five trucks. And, you know, now they don't have sufficient drivers and they need to sell a truck or two. That's kind of the way I go as far as uh, buying my trucks. So I don't have a list of dealerships here. But if you DM me, I'll work on that for you, and I can get you some names. I hope that helps. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here, David. Mr. David. <coughs> awesome. Thanks, Jay. My starting capital is 25K. 25K. Now, is this, um, help me out here, David, is this to buy a dump truck or is this to kind of, uh, uh, you know, go out and hire some trucks and kind of do the broker thing? If it's just for, um, I'll go ahead and answer that either way. If it's for, if it's for a dump truck, um, I think, the, okay, you're following up with how to offset the 20% uh, percent or more on, uh, as far as down payment on the truck. Uh, 20, 25K, man, I think you could do it. I think there's, I think it definitely gets you back to 25 <laughs> I think that, um, again, okay, let's see, he's at, he's, yes, to buy a dump truck, okay. I'm located in here in Georgia. So, man, I love Georgia, man. My brother's out in Georgia, man. I was just in Georgia not too long ago. I, unfortunately, I don't have anybody to refer you to. Um, I wish I did. Uh, but 25K, yeah. David, do some due diligence, brother. Do some deep research. I know you can find uh, somebody out there that's willing to sell you a dump truck for 25K. Try to find, like I, um, like I was saying um, earlier, try to find some of those smaller dealerships. Uh, with 25K down, you should be able to get you a decent dump truck. I, I really don't see why you shouldn't. You, know, you, you wouldn't find one. Just do some, keep doing some uh, legwork. I'm pretty sure you'll find uh, somebody that's willing to, uh, to sell you a, uh, a dump truck if you put $25,000 down. Uh, again, I think you're probably going, some of you guys, if you're going to these uh, big dealerships and, and trying to buy a brand new truck, that, that is the main thing. That's the reason why. You know, these, these guys are looking at it as a business. Meaning they're like, man, we're gonna give this guy a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar truck, and that's the reason why they want fifty, sixty, or seventy thousand dollars down, right? So they want some leverage. So they want you to put skin in the game. But for you guys that are starting off, that is a lot of money. I, believe me, I know. I was there. I was there. I've been there. So uh, try to find some of those smaller dealerships. There's got to be other dealerships out there that you can definitely buy a, a nice used dump truck for twenty five k down. Believe me, there ha there has to be some in the state of Georgia. Uh, just do some more research. Um, again, I wish I could help you out and giving you some 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 names, but I just don't have any for you. Uh, but do some research, and if you have more questions, DM me, and I, and, I, and I'll try to uh, help you out a little bit more with that. Um, guys, we got about it's one twenty. So we actually uh, we were we we're gonna go about for about an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, we're a little over an hour and 20 minutes. So, uh, guys, we're going to kind of uh, get ready to close it up. We've got 10 more minutes, guys. So, please, if you have questions, like they say, send them now because, uh, you know, in 10 minutes, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be out here and uh, we've got a lot of other things to attend to. And I want to make sure I answer your question. I don't want you to hold back on something and, uh, and then say, yeah, I should have asked that question. I've been there myself. So, if you have any questions, let me know now, 10 minutes, guys, and um, we have 10 minutes, and, and hopefully I can answer your question here in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to go to the Instagram here. I've got uh, Moon Man. Hey, Moon Man said thank you. Okay, let's see if we have any questions here. Okay, we just got people coming in saying thank you, Jay. Thank you. We appreciate everything. Instagram, I appreciate you guys. All right. Kai, we got more questions coming up. We got a question, Yvette. P, if you're finding work for other trucks, should you assume they are doing the job? Should you check on the trucks? So let me read that. If you are finding work for other trucks, should you assume they are doing the job. Should you check on the trucks? Uh, trying to get some clarity on this question. I'm thinking you're asking on the broker side of it. If you're finding work for other trucks, meaning as a broker, should you assume they are doing the job? So that's a broker question. As a broker, guys, again, I keep reiterating this. 
building networks, building connections. I have a pool of guys, owner operators, that own not only one, two, and three, and four trucks, even five or six trucks. These guys are kind of committed to us. They're willing to help us out. Why? Because we've been we've been able to build a great relationship with them, right? And so I try to be consistent with giving them good work and in return. Guys, they respond with they respond, you know. If I call them, hey, I need a truck, I need your two trucks, I need your two trucks, they're there for me. That is something that's gonna happen over time. It's not gonna happen overnight. Uh, again, you gotta have patience, right? This is part of the best student in the game. So um, should you think they're gonna do the job? Yes and no, meaning you call them and they're like, hey, I'll be there, Jay. You should be able to count on them. But have backups. Have backups. If the contractor's asking you for five trucks, got to have a six truck cleaned up. Because if one of them cancels or something happens, the six truck comes in and covers. Right? Hope that answers your question. Thank you for the question, Yvette. I got a question coming in from Major. Major, what's going on, sir? Hello, Jay. I'm in Austin, Texas. Do you have a contact for good used dump trucks? Possibly a triple axle. You know what, uh, Major? I have, I have, I think, a couple of contacts. DM me. DM me on Instagram. Let me go through my phone book. I might be able to help you. I know a couple of people in the Austin area, and I uh, hope that I can help. Make sure you DM me on my Instagram. Have a little bit of patience, but I will get to your question. And hopefully I can go through my phone book and pull up pull some names that may be able to help you with that. Again, I'm, I have to go through my phone book just to clarify because, uh, you know, I, I don't talk to some of those guys in Austin all the time, but I think I have a, a, a couple guys that may be able to help you with that. A good question. Uh, Keon Jackson. All right. Uh, Jackson, would you advise someone with a government job to get into the dump truck business from Ohio? Would you advise someone with a government job to get into the dump truck business from Ohio? Let me make sure I'm, I'm, I'm understanding the question the right way so I can answer it properly. I believe you're asking if you are working for the government, uh, should you quit your job and get into the dump truck business? I think that's what you're asking. Or are you asking try to do the dump truck business while you're still working for the government? <clears throat> um, I mean, you can do both, honestly. Uh, just make sure there's no conflict of interest, meaning you're going to be working or you have a job right now working for the government and you're doing the dump truck business. <clears throat> make sure uh, there's no conflict of interest, meaning if you're working for, I don't know, the city of Ohio, right? Uh, and you're going to be on jobs that for the city of Ohio, that may be a conflict. So just kind of be careful with that. But yeah, you can do both. Hope that answers your question. All right, let's check Instagram. We've got, what, five minutes, four minutes left? <clears throat> What's a good truck to buy? A good buy use just starting out. What's a good use truck to buy when you're starting out? <clears throat> Uh, RYB 10, 18, 14. So it depends where you're at. It depends on where you're located. And to answer that question uh, best way possible, find out. Uh, we just did a video yesterday. We just did a video be coming out. Um, something I highly recommend. Before going and buying a used dump truck, find out what kind of trucks have the most amount of work in your area. Meaning the following. What are you seeing out there? Are you seeing tandem? Are you seeing triaxles? Are you seeing quads? Right? Are you seeing super dumps out there? The truck with the five and six axles, right? What kind of truck do you see out there on the road? Uh, talk to some of the guys that are already in the business. Okay? Hey, what do you usually see? What, what kind of trucks do contractors normally hire? Is it dump? Is it tandems? Is it tries? Is it quads? That's the first thing I would do. Find out what kind of truck usually uh, uh, stays, you know, uh, the busiest out there. Uh, what kind of truck the, the contractors are usually uh, giving more work to. And that's the first way, uh, that's the first thing I would do. Once you figure that out, let's just say it's a triaxle, right? Um, then you look for a good use triaxle. Makes and models, to go a little deeper with the question, it, again, it just depends. 
But my personal preference, Kenworth, Peterbilt, and Max. Uh, you know, somebody asked a question about the uh, engine. If it's gonna be a bigger a dump truck, you know, a quad or a quad or above, just make sure they have enough horsepower, like a 420, 430 and above. If it's just a tandem or try, you can probably get a, a get a, a get by just fine with anything between a 350 and a 400 horsepower truck. Uh, make sure they have a good suspension. Of course, check out the truck. And I got a video on that. We just dropped the video on that, you know, on how to buy your first uh, used truck. Make sure you check that video out. Hope you, I hope I answered your question. All right, guys, we got two minutes. <clears throat> Francisco Valero, I am planning to start in the trucking in a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. In a year from now. What would you recommend to plan? I'm currently work. I currently work as a PM. That's a project manager for a construction company. I'm familiar with the other side of the business. Hey, Francisco, I, I, good question, man. Um, if you're a PM, you probably already kind of know a little bit about uh, some of the insights because you're one of the guys out there that's probably uh, is, is checking up on those uh, trucks, dump trucks, right? Making sure they're doing what they're supposed to, right? So you got a little bit of insight, which is great, brother. This great. Um, yeah, so uh, how to plan. I think your question is more um, how to plan for it because you're talking about a year from now. And, and, and uh, what do I recommend as far as planning? Again, connections, networks. Uh, go out there. You're going to get into the dump truck business. Those guys that you already see that are probably on one of your job sites, talk to them. Build a relationship, Francisco. What do you want to do, man? Build a relationship. Get their phone number. You know, at, at once a week, give them a call. Hey, uh, Miguel or hey, Joe, how's it going, man? Hey, this is uh, Francisco. Hey, brother, um, how's it been, man? How's your business been? Um, how's the dump truck business doing right now? What kind of materials you're hauling? Ask them questions, man. Start a friendship and ask them questions. Uh, this will kind of help you, you know, uh, start to get more involved and help your planning as, as, you, as you, you know, uh, you know, plan for the next year. Uh, obviously, have some funds available too. Uh, you know, <clears throat> save some money because I'm not sure what which route you're gonna go. If it's a tandem, a tie, a quad, so you're gonna need some capital to buy that dump truck, right? Are you gonna buy it uh, out? You know, out, you know, just in full, pay for it up front. Or are you gonna give it down payment? <clears throat> so, you know, make sure you got some capital for that. Uh, but most importantly, again, build the connections, build the relationships, uh, pick these guys' brain. You know. And, um, and this is a good way that you get to know the business uh, and try to build as many connections and contacts as you can in the next year. And of course, continue to watch our content, but we yeah. have drop comments and I'll try to get to the comments uh, in, in the messages. That's for everyone that's out there. Hope I answer your question, Francisco. Last question, guys. And this is coming from Yvette, Yvette B. When you started, what time did you start your day? <laughs> what time? <laughs> what time I started? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little deeper. What time do I end my day too, right? Guys, again, I'm being transparent and being honest. There's nothing easy, man. There's no easy business out there. Um, if you're in the dump truck business, yes, yeah, it's a good business, but you gotta put in the work, guys. Okay? Don't let people fool you, man. I'm being, again, I'm being very honest with you, okay? Some people may tell you otherwise. Whatever, it works for them. If it did, great. But I know, I've been running a business, you know, right now since 2011. Let me tell you guys, what kind of started my day when I first started? I started my day at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning. And, and let me tell you, when I started the first few years, I was going all the way till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, even midnight. You're probably thinking, Oh, man, Jay, I don't know if I want to quit my job. Well, it depends on how successful you want to be. It depends on how fast you want to get there. I knew one thing. When I started, I needed to get there quick. Why? Because I quit my job. Man. I quit my job. You know, my youngest son was being uh, born, and I had to pick it up. I had to get straight to it. I had to, you know, mind my business, be consistent, be persistent, Yes, it included long hours, guys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you otherwise and sugarcoat it because I'm just being transparent with you, okay? 
But with that being said, that's another way you're going to separate from competition. Okay, to uh, go back to uh, one of the questions that uh, Luis was asking. That's another way you separate from competition, guys. You put in the work. Put in the work. You have anybody that, that, that has a highly successful business, I guarantee you they're going to tell you they put in the work. Okay? You have to put in the work, guys. I started at 530, and when I was going through that journey, the starting phase, right, what I like to call laying the foundation down for my business, I really didn't have a set time. Meaning, if I went to eight, nine o'clock at night, eating, you know, make sure you get some food, make sure, you know, you still make answer your phone calls, your family, and your family has to understand, you know, hey, I'm going through this journey right now. I'm starting a business, right? So there was times, guys, where, um, you know, I was staying up to midnight because what I was doing, it was I was actually sending invoices. I would go out. I was a sales guy. I was the guy, you know, uh, you know, getting the jobs, getting the contracts, going out on the field, calling the, the owner operators, uh, managing, you know, uh, the guy, the, you know, helping my guy, my driver at the time. Sometimes he would have questions. I'd have to, you know, help him out. Uh, so I had a lot of parts, and I was the only one taking care of all those moving parts, right? And so, yes, it consumed a lot of my time. And then again, and I would come in at night, I started from home, and guess what I was doing at night? After dinner, invoicing. I had to learn how to invoice, guys. So um, you're going to wear many hats. But if you talk to any or anybody that started a business, they're probably going to tell you something similar. You have to wear several hats. That's probably one of the hardest parts, right? The second hardest part is getting up every day and being consistent with it, Okay. And at the beginning, if you don't have patience, guys, it may get to you. You got to have patience, guys. Just have patience, okay? Be dedicated. Be consistent. Be persistent. And I promise you it will, it will work out. And again, build connections. Build relationships. You know, watch content, you know? I didn't have this YouTube content, guys, back when I was starting. So I hope this content helps you. I hope everything we've talked about today helps you. So, guys, with that being said, we're out of here. Uh, drop your comments, uh, DM me, and I would, you know, love to uh, reply to you guys. Guy, I know we have to go. Oh, we got one more. Okay, last question. <clears throat> so, I'm subscribed to your channel. I'm due to graduate from CDO training in June. I'm, re I'm really researching hard to, direct, to, di to directly into dump trucking. Please help. Uh, okay, so let me read that again. Uh, okay, William, I'm subscribed to your channel. I'm due to graduate from CDO training in June. I'm really researching hard starting into the dump trucking. William, appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you watching the channel. I hope the channel is helping you. I hope this content is helping you out. So, all right. So, as far as uh, CDO training, I hope that you kill that and you get to graduate in June. And uh, so, one of the things I would highly recommend, <clears throat> I'm not sure which way you're going to go. Are you going to go straight into buying a dump truck? <coughs> Excuse me. Or are you going to go into driving for somebody? Right? Because those two ways you can go about that. What I would do, William, this is my personal suggestion. I would go and drive for somebody. Of course, it's going to require patience, and I just talked about this. We'll go and drive for somebody at least three months. Give you at least three months, 90 days. If you can, four or five months, even better. At least three, three months, drive for somebody, you know, and that's in the dump truck business, okay? Because you're trying to get into the dump truck business. So look for somebody. And I guarantee you, I'm not sure that you put on there where you're located. No. I, mean, I don't know where you're located. But I know in Houston, I think in Texas overall, we're, we're in shortage of dump truck drivers. Okay? So find somebody that has a dump truck and go out there and work for a few months. Learn the game. Once again, I'm going back to saying what I was saying before. Be a student of the game, right? Because when you go out there and you're driving somebody's truck, you're going to be picking up all this knowledge, right? 
So what you want to do is you want to kind of, that's kind of your the way you learn, right? You're driving somebody else's truck. And then once you feel like you're confident enough and you have enough experience, then I would go to buy my own dump truck. Now, if you want to be bold and brave enough to just jump right into it, you can do that as well. But just remember, there's going to be, you know, some, 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 some balls there. You're going to have to get back up and, you know, keep going with it, okay? Um, but if you get patient, go here, drive. So if you want to, you know, go the other route, if you have a little bit of patience, go out on a job with somebody who owns a dump truck. My opinion and suggestion, preferably somebody who owns dump trucks that's been in the business, meaning they've been in the business for at least five years, right? Because you will also be able to learn something from them. Meaning if they own five trucks, three or four, or whatever the case, however many trucks, I believe me, they probably have some knowledge that you want to pick up on. So that's the way I would go about it. I hope I answered your question. William, thank you, my brother. Thanks for watching the channel. Guys, that's it. We're going to be out of here. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you guys for joining us on the live. This was our first live. Uh, I hope I was able to, uh, to answer your questions. I appreciate you guys. I do this again, guys, just trying to give you guys value, okay? So drop comments. I try to get to everybody. Uh, again, if you're in Texas, you want to come see us, Texas Truck Show, June 24th, June 25th. We'll be there. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And uh, drop a comment. Drop a post. Tell us what you think about the live. And, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. We'll keep dropping the videos. We'll keep dropping comments. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, Insta.